Good old 4 just released yesterday and that's a huge thing. Hello guys, good day to you. I'm Andrew from Miralad Games and today we're going to cover this news that came just yesterday, the 1st of March 2023. Honestly, this post is so big and so huge that honestly, I have no idea how I'm going to cover everything. But if you want to have a 360 point of view, you can see the post yourself or just go and watch GD Quest's video. He made a lovely work about every new features and everything about God of War. Or you can stay here with me and we can see it together because I'm going to read this post, but we can do even worse. You know, I do only bad things. Without further ado, let's start. God of War have been in work for three years and they went through 17 alphas, 17 betas and six release candidates. Now, if you watched my last video, honestly, I was very, very complaining about these six release candidates because they were overlapping each other and I kind of didn't get used with each one of those. I didn't have idea what was new and I was not understanding a thing. In my humble opinion, these six releases could have been just three and it would have been okay anyway. Now, an important thing is that God of War is just the start, the beginning of the journey, like they say, because right now they need a lot of support because you need to report bugs like, like hell, <laughs> you know, go there, try the software and report bugs. And obviously there will be a God of War.01, a God of War.02 later this year. So, so we need to take things warm here, okay? And if you are working with God of 3, well, you're not going to be abandoned to yourself because they're going to support you with a long-term version that is going to be God of 3.6. So basically, if your projects at the moment are in God of 3, well, don't worry about that. You can keep developing on that. But honestly, I think you should be switching to God of War. And here we'll find out why. Like I was saying, GD Quest made a wonderful video, just go and check it. New features of God of War. Now, honestly, like they are saying, God of War is more a great rebuild than just a regular update. So take in mind that, take in mind that. And if you see here the list of each chapter that they are covering this post, honestly, it's huge. It's huge. Let's talk about 3D and general rendering over hove. Let's talk about the Vulcan, the big elephant in the room. You probably know this, but Godot was never good in 3D. Honestly, that was the thing that didn't make it mainstream, in my honest opinion. It was kind of always behind Unity, Unreal, or whatever engine that was used commercially there. I'm not saying that limitations are bad, but 3D wasn't that great in Godot 3. We, we need to be honest here. And they say it in more points here, but, but with Vulcan, I had time to kind of experiment a lot. And honestly, it's a huge game changer. You know, now can easily be one of the mainstream engines out there that you can use for commercial games. And honestly, I can wait for this to happen because Godot deserves it because now it has everything. Well, you can still use OpenGL, I mean, you need to use that if you want to export for most of the, you know, hardware out there. And they are working with Direct3D 12 render for better Windows and Xbox support. Now, finally, we can take advantage of AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution 1.0. This basically renders your game in a lower resolution and it runs your game smoothly, but actually AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution makes all the work to upscale it and make it look great. And let's go a little bit deeper in this. They highly improved lighting and shadows. Now, if you know God of 3, it was never so good with the shadows, but now you can have so much better shadows, especially because we have now the Godot's global illumination system that it was made from scratch. There is the sign distant field global illumination as well for bigger uh, worlds, open worlds, but honestly, I will go for Voxel G GI node because I tend to work with small rooms and small stuff, but you can use both of them. You can try both of them and see which fits for your project. There are new rendering optimization techniques that are made by Juan and John Fons. I have no idea. I'm I'm destroying this name. The thing here is that you can see the dedication of Juan because you're going to read his name everywhere. You can see the dedication and the love that he put in this project. It it's been a love project. I mean, three years of work, guys. Three years of work. And there are other features like the occlusion cooling, where basically uh, 
the objects that are behind another object, they kind of disappear. They get uh, dynamically removed and that improves performance and that's great. I mean, you can obviously use the automatic mesh LOD where you can use the level of details basically, or you can set it manually and you can have visibility ranges as well. That's huge. I mean, what are we talking about here? Now let's talk about to do improvements. And this part is probably the one that I love more because this section basically is dedicated to me. <laughs> guys like me that make mainly 2D games. I love making 2D games and that's the thing. Obviously I've been experimenting a little bit with 3D but this is something that, you know, it's going to change your perception of Godot engine. Godot 4 allowed us to introduce some radical changes to the 2D workflow. Now guys, I have to say this, if you have been using Godot 3 and you're switching to Godot 4, well, you may be a little bit disappointed because a lot of things have changed. Obviously, there's a learning curve, but once you learn to use the Godot 4, well, you're not going to regret actually. You're going to love it. Now, the biggest improvement that they made is probably the new tile map editor. If you have been using tile maps, well, you can easily understand that this was a needed feature. There wasn't so much flexibility in the old version. Now you can basically have animated tile maps. You can find tune collisions, navigation, pivot points, and more properties of the tiles. They include layers now. I think that layers are such a great and amazing thing to improve your workflow. And obviously the auto tiling system to paint larger areas quickly, a randomized painting system to scatter plant, rocks and other props, and the selection to copy, stamp and save selection to reuse later. Now you can make basically stamps of some section of your map. And you can see here that you can place characters, chest or whatever interactive scene in the grid cell. And here is the main thing. I mean, you can have no characters placed in the grid cells. This is such a huge game changer. I think you're going to love and I'm going to love. And let's jump to the new 2D rendering options. The new 2D canvas renderer has been updated. Basically, you can stack a bunch of sprites together and have them blended with the background as if they were a single item. I mean, this is great, guys, because you can make mockups directly on Godot engine. You don't need to necessary to use another software to make those stuff. You can make them directly on Godot. So this will improve your workflow and it's going to be less time consuming. And they say that they improve the image quality and you can have now smooth edges. And now you can use masks, basically. You can use whatever kind of 2D element like mask. You can see here different masks. And that's great again. And they say that they improve lighting and shadows in to do as well. So basically you're going to have 2D directional lights and shadows improvements. You can use sign distance field in shaders. You can achieve advanced visual effects such as long drop shadows, halos, and crisp outlines. For a 3D feeling, light elevation can be controlled in normal maps. You will notice a significant improvement in performance when using multiple light sources. I mean, now you can really create very immersive and interesting 2D environments with this. And I can't wait to use it for my games as well. Now let's jump to another thing that is very important. And this thing is the new atmospheric effect. Volumetric fog is such a great thing. It's amazing. And you can see this very interesting effects. I used it for the scene. You can see here my scene and that's great. That's great. I love it. Obviously you can make a general thing or you can use the fog volume node that is very interesting to have in your scene as well. There is a sky shader now which can create dynamic skies that updates in real time and the texture and material projection. Now they introduce the fact that you can use decals in whatever materials. You can basically apply to whatever surface some other layers of details like, you know, um, dirt and stuff like that. And going even further, we find this section that is the enhanced shader game world interaction. Basically, the GPU based particles have been improved. Now they have collision trails sub emitters and manual emission and you can see from this image basically the rain here is interacting with the houses it looks cool it looks cool now imagine that scene with your character where rain is interacting with your character 
that makes sense makes it beautiful obviously they improved the shader editor and honestly this was something that i was waiting for because i have the occasion to try the shader editor in Godot 3 and it was a little bit tedious honestly i didn't like it i didn't like it let's put it like that for example, I want to create this shader effect where you can have basically this shock wave that is just a few lines of code. To make that in the visual shader, this is the amount of nodes that I needed to use basically. And that made me kind of want to learn the shader language. I said, what? I, sh I have a shader editor. Why should I need to learn the shader language? But that kind of made me really try to kind of understand the shader language, okay? Godot now supports and uses compute shaders to accelerate alg algorithms using the graphics card. I think that they take advantages of the full power of the graphics card to, you know, to work with shaders. And scripting, GDScript, this is a huge, huge chapter. I'm not going to cover it. I'm just going to point out that now you can have multiple error reporting and that's great because somehow, basically, if you remember Godot 3, well, you had one error per time. Basically, basically Godot went to the first error and it stopped and it said, there's a error. Now it can work with multiple errors and it can, and it can report it to you all these lines that are errors. And another thing that you may love, and I'm going to make a video about this, is basically that now you can automatically generate, that now you can automatically generate documentation for your scripts. And this will improve your workflow in Tim. And I mean, this is amazing. There is a lot of stuff going here about C Sharp. You, you can read this if you are interested in it. I'm a GD script guy. And another important thing probably is GD extension experimental, because thanks to this, basically they can port other types of languages to Godot. So you can use C or C++ or Rust with Godot engine, thanks to GD extension. But it is still experimental. Now physics have been improved as well. There is now Godot physics. They're not using any more bullet. And this thing improves obviously the performance because now they know everything about their engine because now they can expand, can improve it and fix bugs easily because they brought this engine so and obviously there are some new collision shapes like cylinders they implemented high maps for terrain and subbody nodes for clothing simulation there is the multi-threading performance optimization as well it comes with better performance obviously everything here is done for better performance Godot physics is an area that will continue to receive ongoing effort now ue and text because now you have multiple windows they say that if you are an app developer but honestly even you are a game dev you need this you should be pleased to learn that godot 4 now supports multiple windows uh, per running application you have now a new visual widget for picking layouts options the the inspector has filters for the properties so you can search so you can make your searches and you can filter your properties so that way the text rendering system is so much better now because finally we have um, access to different language types, different writing types, basically from right to left to from left to right. And more important, you can access to your fonts installed in your machine directly from the editor. You don't need to install them. You don't need to import them as, as font files. And another thing that you may love is actually that then you can change the size of the text directly on the editor. You don't need to create a new instance above from, from that, basically. There are new themes and there is a new theme editor that is being improved a lot. And more important probably is this part here, is a translation workflow. And this is important if you are making a game in more languages, so you can switch easily in this way. Like I was saying, the editor has been improved a lot and now you can undock your windows there is a dedicated importing window right now dialog window and that's great as well because you can see a preview of what you are doing basically obviously you can import your gltf files at runtime allowing more modular 3d projects and tool made with the engine obviously the color picker changed there are different color pickers now 
there are different shapes now and obviously you have palette you you can use palettes as well so basically we have the inspector doc improvements scene doc improvements new ways to search and filter notes quickly scripting editor improvements as well and here we can talk about a feature that was backported to Godot 3.5 is basically the ability to mark notes as unique in your scene and that makes it so much easier to access to them because they are unique there is a easier version control as well there is a new movie maker mode basically you can basically you can record your editor your Godot scene directly from Godot you don't need to open OBS right now and you can export this in uh, an AV format or as in segments of PNGs extended complex navigation systems now these are very interesting and very important if you are making basically enemy AIs so if you want to if you want to learn more just go and read about this and this definitely is the interesting part XR wider headsets and platformer support OpenXR is now embedded in the engine core. Basically, you don't need to import uh, plugins for this. You have it directly in Godot. We have SteamVR, Oculus, Monado. And these are supported on Windows and Linux. If your project is destined for Android devices, an official plugin extends support for the MetaQuest that I own. And definitely, we're going to make some games for this. And Pico 4 VR headset. You can also already use the Magic Leap 2 headset, OpenXR Compliant HTC headset, and the new Lynx R1 AR headset through support for these is still being fine-tuned. So basically they're still working, but they are there. And Godot XR tool, basically Godot 4 allows you to accelerate development on your XR projects. And I love this fact because VR is here and we need to support VR because it's a new technology and the market there is still, still accessible. I think that it's easier to access that market than the actual markets, than the actual indie games market, like, I don't know, Steam or Epic Games, whatever. If you work with VR, probably you have more chances to, you know, have some success and sell your game. More stable networking systems, there is a simplified multiplayer development for workflow so there has been improvement on this side as well another important thing probably is audio and we have built-in polyphony the new built-in polyphony support allows you to stock and repeat the same sound multiple times on top of itself using a single audio stream node and this is very important because because this way you can create more effective sound designs and sound effects music looping point and text to speech another major area of the engine that received a lot of love is an animation now the fact is that if you are importing they already talked about this but if you are importing skeletons 3d basically you can see the bone map here directly in the preview editor probably you can make changes directly from here when you are importing animation basically and like i was saying improve 3d animation workflow blending transition and complex animation support as well so basically you can have state machines uh, so you can change from an animation to another and that's another thing that you need if you want to make complex animations and complex games okay and here we go we are nearly to the end of this video we are on the platform support android and web support well you already know it but godot works with windows mac os and linux but actually it can run on web as well and it can run on android as well so there there are different platforms where you can run your god of four engine so that's great because this makes everything more accessible the web version isn't that great and actually isn't that stable but but you know it's just okay to i don't know you want to experiment something when you are at work and you don't have that much time you have just 10 minutes you have an idea you just want to see if that idea works and you can do that just go on the web page and you can work directly there they're trying to include a vast variety of devices you can export for so you can export for raspberry pi microsoft volterra surface pro x point vision 5 arm chromebooks and asahi linux 
And obviously we have still Windows, Linux, and Android, iOS, and Mac OS. But one thing that they are going to work hard, and probably this is going to be mostly made by the W4 Games, that is the other company that actually worked to support Godot Engine, is basically to port your game for Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch. And they don't have an open source SDK, so basically you need to pay them to work with their SDK. And for the moment, there aren't so much options. So if you want to export your game for those platforms, there are already services for this, for Godot 3. So you need to stick with Godot 3. But I think that very soon, new services for Godot 4 are going to pop up and everything is going to be fine. Oh yes, this is all. We just read the Godot post. I'm very excited, like you can see. And honestly... I didn't expect it to come so soon, but I was feeling it in the air, you know, because because the release candidates were coming very fast. And honestly, I'm okay with this. I'm okay. I, I can't wait to start my new projects and work with the God of War. So if you made it so far, thank you very much for watching. Let me know down in the comment section what do you think about God of War, what are the features that you like most, and let me know if you are going to switch to God of War or you're going to stick with God of 3 a little bit more until you feel more comfortable. I'm switching to God of 4, but I'm using both of them. I'm switching for God of 4 for a future project, but for actual projects, I'm still keeping God of 3. And if you made it so far, thank you for watching, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. This helps me a lot to, to grow, obviously, because, you know, I made my I made my New Year's resolution and hopefully this year we're going to reach the 3K subscribers is just something stupid, I know. Anyway, see you soon and more important, keep devving games!